A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Today we get to add another group of people who didn't have faith in Jesus. In addition to the disciples and Jesus' family, at least for now, we see that the Nazarenes have arguably the least amount of faith in him. As a result, Jesus wasn't able to perform miracles because a prerequisite for being healed was faith. Without faith, there could be no miracles. This begs the question as to why the Nazarenes had very little faith in Jesus. And today's passage actually hints at why, when they call Jesus the son of Mary. In the first century, children were never addressed by the mother in favor of the father, i.e., in Jesus' case, the son of Joseph. In context, if a child is addressed as son of Mary, as Jesus is, that would imply that there was no father, meaning the child was born out of wedlock and therefore an illegitimate child. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, Jesus was virgin born, so that must be why the Nazarenes refer to Jesus as son of Mary. However, it would be fitting to note that Mark's gospel does not have an infancy narrative, so it says nothing about Jesus being virgin born. This tradition wouldn't get written down until the Gospel of Matthew and Luke around the year 85. Mark did not use the same source that they did. So as a result, Mark wouldn't be implying Jesus' birth because this tradition wasn't part of the community yet. However, if we were to grant that the Nazarenes were to somehow know about Jesus being born of a virgin, the Nazarenes certainly do not treat him that way. If they knew about it, and Mark didn't, they certainly aren't buying it. They treat him like an illegitimate child. And by extension, first century Jewish tradition would imply that someone in Jesus' family had sinned against God. So the Nazarenes would probably see Jesus being born in sin as divine punishment from God. As a result, regardless of whether or not they heard any rumblings about Jesus being virgin born, they treat him as if he were a bastard. So they would clearly have no faith in him. And without faith in Jesus, he wouldn't be able to do miracles in his hometown. No faith, no miracles. So when Jesus says a prophet is not without honor except in his native place, we can at least see that the Nazarenes have a negative bias towards Jesus. And this negative bias isn't just that he was born in a poor family. It appears to be much worse. And based on first century Jewish tradition, the implication of his being referred to as son of Mary gives us a hint as to how the Nazarenes saw Jesus i.e. a bastard. Regardless of what their reasons might have been, this negative treatment of him clearly has a huge effect on Jesus as a result. 
And we all have probably had experiences like Jesus's. We sometimes get judged by people unfairly when they really don't know what's going on in our lives. In addition, being Christian often invites people to persecute us because we often go against societal norms. So when we experience suffering from being judged by other people, we can look to Jesus and know that he knows exactly how we feel.